everyone and welcome to the final VOD review of 2022. This is my third take of this because my internet keeps going out. So if you see multiple cuts throughout this video, first of all, I probably punched my monitor. Second of all, LA sucks when it comes to rain. And third of all, please God, I hope we don't have to cut this multiple times. Uh, we had a banger of a playoffs and a banger of a grand finals for the 2022 season. Dallas Fuel managing to get the win. The cycle of misery is finally over. San Francisco shock with a legendary lower bracket run. And we'll be talking about that match. As per always, I'm not going to be doing a deep dive of this VOD. I'm not going to be talking about all the little things and the nitty gritty. That's not really what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this time to talk about the playoffs, talk about the shock, talk about the Dallas Fuel, and just the basic things that happened throughout the match. So we will get talking about that. But before we get into it, I thought we would talk about the bracket. Uh, this is what happened in the playoffs. Uh, a lot of interesting storylines. I'll just hit the key points. Um, Philadelphia Fusion, pretty firmly the worst team in the playoffs uh, in this tournament. Looked very poor. Uh, Hong, uh, Toronto defined Atlanta Reign and Shanghai Dragons went out first round. I expect Shanghai Dragons to do a rebuild of their roster. Just had a pretty disappointing season considering that they won just last year. Some players playing before, uh, poorly. Boyd is uh, retiring, going into military service. People are expecting some other retirees, maybe Fletta, maybe a couple of others. You never know. Lana, Meta did not shift into their favor. They just did not look comfortable. They put Gator in at the last second to just hope that would help. But just, you know, it didn't really have the heroes required that Atlanta is really good at. Trying to find, almost made a run back against the Hongjo Spark, um, putting Hopper in on the Winston, but did not work. Then we had the Los Angeles Gladiators go out next to the San Francisco Shock, who are beginning their lower bracket run. San Francisco Shock started out poor against the Houston Outlaws in the upper bracket when they chose them, losing in map five, but then slowly starting to make their run through the lower bracket. Gladiators performing very poorly for what we expected. I had them slated to win, and they definitely did not. Uh, they were a little confused with what they wanted to do with the Kevster Happy Sojourn Reaper. Kevs to start on the Soja in the first match that they played. It just, from what we've heard, is that they expected it to be Winston Tracer, and when it went Winston Reaper, they just weren't in a good spot. They weren't comfortable with that meta and did not perform well. With that said, they did lose to Shock, someone, a team that ended up being very dominant. Florida Mayhem had a very close series with the Hongjo Spark, but the Hongjo Spark lower bracket started to come through at this point as well, just on the back of Shy being an absolute giga chad on that Sojin. And Gushway back in 2019, Gushway form. His Winston was absolutely incredible. The Primal Blades coming in full effect, but the Florida Mayhem didn't really perform to the level we would expect from them uh, that we saw in the, uh, like, in the most recent times. Hydron Sojin didn't have that same level of impact. Someone wasn't as good on that Winston. They were okay, and I don't think you can talk, you know, they can't be upset with their performance. Um... But it definitely wasn't that crazy run in the playoffs that we'd seen from the Mayhem uh, so far. Yeah, they beat Atlanta twice. They were better than Atlanta, that's for sure. Uh, I felt bad for Atlanta. Their two losses were both to the Florida Mayhem, which, you know, that's, uh, that's a feels bad. Soul Dynasty, another team that disappointed in the playoffs. They have a good team. They expect it, we expected them to be good in this meta. But with profit on that Reaper... Smurf not able to really dive as effectively. They just weren't able to get their coordination going. They did an interesting thing where they moved Profit over to the flex support to play the Kiriko in their last match against the San Francisco Shock, but did not work. Uh, Shock, uh, sorry, Soul did lose to Dallas and Shock. The two end up grand finalists of the thing. So you can't look too poorly at their, uh, their losses, except they weren't competitive. That's really the reason we're very down on Seoul after this playoffs is they beat down Florida Mayhem, but then they lost pretty convincingly to Dallas Hill, to the San Francisco Shock, and their run ended very early. Um, then we had the San Francisco Shock taking on the Hongjo Spark, and the Hongjo Spark came to an end. Uh, Shy tried his best, but this is when Proper was really starting to hit his final form on that Sojin. Proper was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Shy and the rest of the team for the Spark. Just wasn't, didn't have enough firepower, wasn't offering enough, and they eventually got quelled to the presence of the San Francisco Shock. We, on the upper bracket, we had the Dallas Fuel facing off against the Houston Outlaws. And Houston, they did get a map, but for the most part, Dallas were just the better team. This was really, at, at this moment, it was just proper, absolutely pounding. Um... 
he was, uh, sorry, not proper. Edison started really pounding. He started coming online and we're like, oh shit, Edison is performing very, very well. Dallas Fuel, honestly, everything going well for them. We'll talk more about the Dallas Fuel um, in the finals, but everything coming together for the Dallas Fuel, they're inventing the meta. They're playing their style, just like the 2021 zombie comp. Um, it's it's finally coming to uh, a thing. Oh, shit, I did forget about London. London, I'm sorry, I forgot about you. You had a great run through the, uh, through the, uh, the playoffs. You're a great team. They actually started surprising everyone. They beat down the Los Angeles Gladiators. They den then fell to the Houston Outlaws, but we thought that they could go further. Even the Dallas Fuel sort of saying, hey, the team that we think is the best still remaining was the London Spitfire. But unfortunately, they did fall to the Hongjo's Park and the level of Shy. Shy, as I said, Shy do be fucking around that time. And uh, London just couldn't keep up with the raw firepower. Great season nonetheless. Top six, Christopher got coach of the year. Hardy got the Dennis Avelka award, got the role star. Nobody had this team slated to be as good as they were just in the whole year, but also incredible performance. I'm excited to see where they end up next year. Uh, the Houston Outlaws eventually got knocked out in the lower bracket final to the San Francisco Shock. This like proper just fucked like that shit was not fair he like broke a bunch of records for final blows per 10 minutes he was just in peak form Merritt had a very good tournament he was playing incredibly well in that sojourn you need to give massive props to this Houston Outlaw squad the best performance that they've ever had in the playoffs solidifying themselves as top three Dante crazy storyline even able to pick up that Winston starting playing the Roadhog Arissa at the start of the playoffs but then realizing they had to full send on the Winston was able to hold on. Pelican playing great on the Reaper. Then you got Lastro. Then you got um, Creative. Everyone really playing well for the Houston Outlaws, but was not enough to beat the San Francisco Shock. But big props to the Houston Outlaws. Best performance they've ever had. I think you can't be unhappy with top three for the Houston Outlaws. How are they going to bolster this roster going into next year so they can be a championship contender? And then we go into Dallas Fuel versus San Francisco Shock. It's the time. It's the time. It's the moment. Let's talk about it. Getting on to Li Zhang Tao. We'll start it out here. Seven map banger. Let's just get it started and we'll talk about all the things. First of all, Dallas fans, please stop being insufferable in all my comments and all my mentions. You, you guys are the reasons why we don't want to talk about your team because you guys are just so annoying. You guys are great. You won it. Congratulations. You got the last laugh, okay? Now we'll be able to talk about this all. I'm going to talk about Proper a lot in this VOD review. You know why? Because Proper is the MVP and the Rookie of the Year, and he's a great player. And the Shock are a great team. If you feel like we're being biased against your team, we aren't. Okay? Let's get into it. Uh, so it, it's kind of an interesting matchup uh, for, for this one because... First of all, these teams came out very nervous. Just everyone facing off. No one wanted to be making that first mistake. But... It's kind of a battle of two teams, in my opinion. I think the San Francisco Shock, heavily, they're kind of that last team that was heavily dependent on Proper just being absolutely incredible. Proper playing an aggressive style, and Dallas Field, just right out of the gates, you can see it. They recognize if we shut down Proper, we will, uh, we will win the match. And you can see how they were really trying to isolate Proper. Proper was playing in this way that every time the Winston jumped into him, he would slide under them. SF Shock would have and won that's the if they only had way they could uh, bounce around them. If we had Jimmy over Proper, maybe true, you know? Jimmy would have been the difference. But yeah, and so the Dallas Fuel, very well coordinated as a team. One player is not just popping off and that's really who they're relying on. Everyone was doing their job. Edison really stepped up in these playoffs on the Sojourn, as we had seen uh, going on. Sparkle, very smart Reaper player. Fearless, who got the finals MVP was the, by far the best Winston. And the be major gap that I saw between these two teams was in the Winston matchup. I actually like that the San Francisco Shock decided to keep Mikey in the entire series. I think he was playing fine. He was playing an aggressive style and they thought that was their best way to win. Instead of just trying to switch it into Kaluj, I actually like that they stay, stay with Mikey, but he definitely got gapped, you know? Fearless is the GOAT in uh, on the Winston and he gets it through again. Uh, the back line of the San Francisco Shock I think they were solid, but I don't think they were anything to write home about. Well, I think the Dallas Fuel backline was very, very good. Chio had some questionable moments, but Fielder, solid as a rock as he always is on that Arc Yoko. 
Private Feeler said Proper isn't playing this fucking game, and he did a great job of it as well, right? Um, all right, let's get some medicine pop. Quite, Violet was questionable. Both Finn and Violet had some questionable moments throughout this series. Uh, I think Violet had some questionable beats and positioning, and Finn had some really bad Kinsude rushes uh, towards the end of the series. I think he really started, like... I, I don't know if they just sort of changed the way that they were thinking about it, but yeah, their Kinsude rushes got a little wacky towards the end, so... But, uh, you know, that's that's the Dallas Fuel strength, right? Like, I think Edison went about even with Proper in this series, and that's all he needed to do. If you can go even with Proper in this setup, rely and trust the rest of your team is going to be able to do their jobs, and they absolutely did. They're so good in our Lucio Reaper composition. It felt like Dallas was better at every position except Sojin, and even then it was almost enough for Shock to win. Yeah, and that just goes to show you how how strong Sojin is in this match. Oh. How strong Sojin is in, in, in this matchup, like, and in this meta. Sojin was so important. I was surprised almost every team Kitsune Rush and counter almost always. Never trying to disengage because it's, it can be difficult to disengage from a Kitsune Rush. It's sometimes easier to just match it. Um, there was definitely a lot of really good Kitsune Rushes um, in this series and like disengages from Kitsune Rushes in this series. Uh, but yeah, most of the time they are just sort of mirrored. Do you think Fielder should have been in the MVP boat instead of Phil, uh, instead of Shu? No, I, I like, you gotta remember the, the people that, like, I think Shu definitely should have been on that. Remember, Shu won two stages at the beginning and the uh, MVP voting was based off of the first three stages. I think it's easy to look in hindsight now that we've seen the playoffs, we saw the Countdown Cup and say that maybe there should have been other people there. But, and there was definitely a couple of people on that list that shouldn't have been on that list. Uh, but it doesn't matter, right? Like, I don't think it would have mattered. If Filter was in the MVP list, he wouldn't have won. Yeah, it's great to be nominated, but it's not a big deal. Dante should have been Rollstar. As I said, I voted for Dante before Countdown Cup happened, and he diffed Hanbin on Zaya, and then apparently knows how to play Winston. So, in hindsight, and after this playoffs, Dante definitely should have been a tank Rollstar. But I think at the time that the voting happened, I can understand why he wasn't. I was the only tournament with the word cup not actually have a cup. <laughs> Asking the hard hitting question, Cyclops. I, I I agree. Wait, how did Phil die either? Oh shit, actually, that's probably gonna be 20 seconds. What's up? Oh, he, he tried to TP to his team and he accidentally teleported to Sparkle. That is actually so sad. That is actually tragic. Yeah, I blame Spark for that one. It's kind of interesting that Felix is counter diving Mikey so much. You see that? Like, even just in this like one fight, he's been just like counter diving. Gets a little aggressive there. Up oh, cheer go, Rob. Do you think we'll secure more uh, sponsors for next year? Hopefully, right? Like, I think Butterfinger had a ton of success in the in the grand finals and the playoffs. Just the amount of brand recognition that they got. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if we get more sponsors going into next year. Also, with hopefully the Microsoft acquisition happening next year, like a lot of the big reasons that sponsors pulled out. Obviously, sponsors pulled out because it wasn't financially viable. You know, the Overwatch League probably wasn't providing enough eyes to justify sponsoring it, but also because of the Bobby Kotick Activision Blizzard thing as well. So hopefully the Microsoft, with us getting more viewership, with us hopefully moving towards Microsoft, people will be more willing to work with the league.
They got some antitrust issues going on. Yeah, but it was never going to go seamless. From what I've heard, the deal is still moving, plodding along. We'll, we'll see. Oh, it's a uh, dangerous old by Sparkle. Oh! Yeah. Roll one way, roll another way. Hopefully I was able to stream on both YouTube and Twitch next year. That's really the, the big question for next year that a lot of people are talking about of uh, the exclusivity deal with YouTube uh, ends this year. Where, what platform is Overwatch going to be on? Uh, are they going to be on multiple platforms? Are they going to try and sign an exclusivity deal? Would they sign an exclusivity deal with Twitch? Do Twitch want to do an exclusivity deal? Is YouTube offering the same amount of money? It's a lot of questions up in the air that we don't really have answers to just yet. I feel like it'll be Twitch since they've already got drops. Well, YouTube has drops as well, but I think Twitch has a better program for that. Oops, I was holding them away. Do we have a date for season next season yet? No, we do not have a date for next season. That was a good kill by Edison. It's a free fight win for Dallas right there. Um, we do not have a date for next season. Obviously, there's been some like stupid speculation. The Halo thing where he said may based on like almost no evidence and that evidence that he did provide as well. The source that he used also just ended up reverting their thing. The thing about Dante where people are just freaking out that Dante said, oh, I, there's a two month off season. I think everyone's reading into that too much. When he says two month off season, he probably means he's probably got a guaranteed two month break before he's required to do any obligations for team and stuff like that. So he wants to stream, but he also wants to go home and take time and take a break. So everyone stop freaking out about that. We are not starting in early January. Oh, Mikey kind of... Oh, I forgot about this. Yeah, so this was the... this We haven't really gotten full clarity on whether or not this is a bug or this is, like, intended. Obviously, it works sometimes, but I feel like sometimes this doesn't happen. I'm not sure with the whole thing, but this was fucking wild in the stadium. Me and Johnny were fucking jumping up and forth. A big Charlie Niner by the Dallas Fuel, because this is a fight that they could have easily gone in their favor. It's because they didn't touch yet. It's because they haven't been on the point at all during that entire cap of San Francisco Shock. So therefore, they haven't triggered any overtime requirements. And because it's not 99, therefore, it just instantly caps. It's a, I think we can all agree it's a stupid system. If, if they're at 99 and they cap and you're, you haven't touched it a little, it should not instantly end. It should just go to overtime. Just send it to overtime. No, I don't, that is a problem that not, nobody was complaining about. To send it to OT is the most balanced way for those kind of things to be uh, to happen. Dallas goes to the point, shot goes to the room. Oh my god, Violet almost died for free there. From a dev team, yeah, I, I don't know if it's a pro, if it's uh, intentional or not. Edison got rolled. I almost said world star chat. I've been trying to get it out of my vocabulary. Dude, proper's tracking is just immaculate. I'm gonna simp for proper this series. I, I if you if you do not like that, I like proper. You guys are gonna need to uh, maybe turn the vod off because I am gonna I'm, I am gonna hype my boy proper up because proper actually had. A ridiculous playoff performance. Like he is by far and away, the, especially considering the fact is that he wasn't a hit scan player. He's it's actually incredible what he's able to accomplish in these playoffs. Playing Soden. Oh, Mike, he just died for free. Oh, the, oh, okay, yeah, no, I forgot about that. 
and then Finn used the Kitsune. This is literally worst case scenario. My MVP. I forgot about that. Probably the only player to exceed the highest expectations in any esports I've seen. And you know, as people said, and I am I agree with this comparison. Proper to me feels like what Faker is to League of Legends. In like, I think that he's about to go on that dynasty, and I hope that we get to see that. Like this is the beginning. He gets MVP and rookie of the year in his first season, almost takes the chip. If he can ha start having like those level performances and start like, if, if they can get a team built around him, like if the San Francisco, oh, that shot by Edison. Uh, if he can, if they can start building around him and they can like get some better players, like I think we can agree there's definitely some holes that the San Francisco shot can shore up. Didn't Faker just lose? Yeah, you know, it, you know, just like Overwatch League, you can't win every time, but. And as you said, I, I'm hoping that he showed his MVP playoffs and the thing. Like, yeah, like I don't understand at this point after his performance in the playoffs that you can be like, I don't think he's the, the, the MVP. Can you imagine if he had, ah, uh, he got got. Uh, can you imagine if he had won the grand finals? If the Shock had won the grand finals, he almost certainly would have got finals MVP. Uh, and he would have literally won every award. It would have been bonkers. He's literally been clapped since you started complimenting him, yeah. And that honestly, like, no joke, that is what made Dallas so good. Is like, they literally, where a lot of teams failed against Hongjo Spark, uh, in a lot of ways, Dallas were the one team that was always able to apply pressure to that standout player. They recognize who the threat is and they can punish it. And like, that's what they did so well. Like, even then, with the amount of pressure they put onto Proper, Proper still did some fucking, like, look at this shit. He has a primaling monkey pushing him around and he's just kills Edison, kills Fielder. It's like, well, what, what more do you want? The man literally can't do more. Um, like obviously his, his supports are great and they did a great job of like helping him. And like a lot of people say that Mikey is feeding and a, bit, a little bit he's feeding, but Mikey is also intentionally putting himself out there to make himself the threat so that they can they look less at proper and stuff like that so you do need to give credit to the rest of the team when you talk about proper as well feeding with style yeah Mikey did well Mikey played fine like I think I think he definitely got gapped but I think he played fine like I don't think you could have asked for more from him oh nice kill by Edison Is it really bad if he gets some kills? No, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, I think there's a lot of people who like blame Mikey for the reason that San Francisco Shock lost. And I don't think that's fair. Like, I don't think that's fair. I think Mikey was doing his job. He had a tough ask against him. He had a tall task. He was fine. Yeah, he really went from Super to Mikey. Yeah, you know, and like, <laughs> it's hard to live up to those expectations, right? Like Super was one of the best tanks to play the game. Uh, so, I think no matter what happened, Mikey was always going to get the blame. But I think Mikey actually played really well in this playoffs. Remember, do you guys, for those who watched my co-stream, the co-stream that I watched of um, uh, of the match that I was sick, the day that I was sick, I was like molding out of control when Mikey, uh, they subbed Mikey in for, for the the lower bracket match. After they lost to the Houston Outlaws and they put Mikey back in in the lower bracket, I was pissed. But Mikey proved me wrong. Like Mikey played really well in the the other series that he played. He he played really well. I don't think he lost a map one every time he was in until that match, right? Wait, who won that map? It was Dallas, right? Like, yeah, it was Dallas. So that was the first map that he lost after that first series to the Houston Outlaws. So I, I think you need to give him credit where credit's due. Shock fans are molding anyway, and Shock fans are going to mold anyway. As I said, they they could be winning and they would still blame Mikey. They got to blame someone, and they're not going to blame Proper, and they're not going to blame Striker, and they're not going to blame Violet. 
because they're the OGs of the 2019 squad and, you know, and the MVP. So they're just going to find someone to blame. So they got to pick Finn or Mikey. It's hilarious to see YouTube chat flip-flop between loving and hating Mikey, depending on how he did. Dude, you're never going to get balanced takes from people. You know, it's just the way it is. And as I said, I think in a world, like as much as I give Mikey a lot of props, if Smurf was on the San Francisco Shock, Shock probably would have won. Just straight up. If they had a better Winston, Shock probably would have won. But in the same vein, if they had a better backline, they probably would have won, right? Like if they had, if Violet and Finn had played better, they probably would have won, right? There's, there were differentials and the Dallas Fuel beat them, I think in the tank and the support match matchup, but you can't just blame Mikey. You can't just be like, Mikey, why aren't you one of the top three Winstons of all time? You got to be realistic with the roster that you have and you got to live and die by the roster that you have on your team. And I think Mikey did good things. Oh my God, Proper just got deleted by the... That was a headshot from Fielder and like a little bit of chip damage from everyone else. If the shock were better, they would have won. I know, that seems like a crazy concept, but people think, you know, that sounds like I'm saying the stupidest thing ever, but l people literally need to hear that. If they had better players in certain roles, they would have won, but you can't have the best players in every single role, right? Every team has strengths and weaknesses, right? And the Shock's weakness was always in their tanks, I think, this year. Uh, because they had two rookie main tanks. <laughs> oh, well, two rookie tanks. That, like, have no experience with the rest of the roster. Oh, Sparkle gets got this time. That was a, that was actually kind of smart by Shock. Like, yeah, look at the way the Shock do this. They they don't want to stand on the point and just like think. They're kind of baiting the Dallas fuel to go, and Dallas kind of takes the bait. Like Sparkle took the bait here, and I think this is like this is really smart. Like as soon as Sparkle walks up, boom, punish. Just gets absolutely rolled. So that was kind of smart. Like Shock, like ooh, look at us, we're on the point. And then as soon as they did that, they disengage, and then punish the Dallas fuel for trying to like fight it but they didn't really need to fight it didn't shock have the highest pay roster i don't think so i don't think shock paid the highest money i will say i think a lot of players went to shock because of the name and because they have crusty um so i don't think shock has to pay as much money to get players to come to their team in comparison to a team like toronto defiant who probably need to throw a bag at a lot like you know we talked about it a lot on plat chat of the chorong thing of they have you have to pay a bag to get a player to come to your team uh if you don't have the like name value dallas might have the highest pay i don't think dallas have the highest pay either as well because this, these players have been on this roster for so long if i'm taking a stab at who i think the two highest paid teams are it's either i would say it's either Shanghai Dragons, Seoul Dynasty, or the Gladiators. I would say those would probably be my three in the top if I was just taking a stab. I actually don't know what the insider knowledge of that is. Houston, I don't think Houston because they have a couple of players that aren't on crazy high contracts, I don't think. Definitely not Houston. It's not Houston. Houston are definitely not, you know, they're not throwing out minimum wages, but they're not, they're not throwing the bag at anyone. Primal versus Primal. Mikey gets absolutely melted while Fearless. Like, you, you could, let's have a look at the difference between these two Primals, because it's very similar. Kitsune Rush and Kitsune Rush into Primal Primal, okay? So Mikey goes in, he gets the thing out, but he doesn't really, like, he doesn't respect the Reaper. Like, I think that last thing, he was just stood around for too long. Let's look at how Fearless does it. He gets, spends around, fucks around, and finds out. Let's see what happens with Fearless here. Like, he jumps in, and he literally just pushes the Reaper away, and then instantly jumps back. He doesn't even get close to low. He just recognizes that disruption is the key there. And he then ends up punching Mikey back, and that's how they win, right? You. 
He's not inside four people like Mikey was. And the problem is not being inside four people like Mikey was. It's okay to be inside four people. The thing is you don't want to be inside four people for too long because then you just take too much damage. So you want to get out before you get got by the four people. This ends now. The kill on the cheer was big. Cheer got a little isolated. Yeah, that kill on the cheer essentially lost that, uh, lost in that thing. Fuel have no ultimates anymore. It's gonna come down to strike his death blossom to see what he can break it open. Why didn't Philly put Carpe on Sojin? Because uh, Carpe Sojin has in general been way worse than MN3s or like Carpe's hitscan this year has been worse than MN3s. On top of that, the reason Carpe was playing is because Zest was injured. What are you going to do? Put MN3 on Reaper and Carpe on Sojin? That doesn't really make as much sense. I don't I don't think it would have mattered who's, who was on the Sojin and who was on the Reaper. Bellows Rhea, I think. If I'm, if I'm just going to be brutally honest, Bellows Rhea was the problem. Just straight up, they had a big old Winston problem with Bellas Rhea. Oh, wow, probably just got rolled. That was such a bad fight for Shock because they had the advantage with the Death Blossom, but now all of a sudden, Dallas was catching up and that advantage is falling away. I thought you never said it's just one problem. Well, yeah, but that's what, like... It's not just one pro player's problem. It's not, ju not just Bellas Rhea, but he is the biggest issue in my opinion. People like to point at Carpe and be like, he is the reason that this team sucked. But there were a lot of reasons that team sucked uh, this year. Or oh, like in the playoffs. And I think my point is that Carpe was not the biggest issue. I think Bellas Rhea was. And maybe you can say, oh, you know, because of Carpe that Bellas Rhea, he's going to force this, isn't he? Well, he didn't. Good beat, but Proper's already dead. Shock have been so out of sync right here. Right, like they use the they use the um, Kitsune Rush. Striker can't go in with anybody. Mikey Primals strike is too way uh, too far away to to follow up. So then he goes back in and then he doesn't have anywhere to go. And then Striker all of a sudden pulls back. I think he rips this here as well, doesn't he? Yeah, this was such a bad fight for Shock. Like just really dis uh, disconnected um, in terms of engagements of like going back and forth. You can see how much Striker struggled to find a way in. Edison pops the overclock at the end to put, a, put an end to that fight, but might not have been necessary. Alos had a big Winston problem. I think Dante was serviceable on that that uh, that Winston. I don't think it was a problem. I think it it just wasn't an asset. Which when you get to the top three, you can't have something that is just fine anymore. He's saying it's the big name coming up this year. Yeah, I think it, it'll be interesting to see which rookies really get hyped up. Um, from what I've heard. And like from what I expect, he's saying he's not going to have the same level of impact as proper, but I think he will be the play, the DPS player to watch coming into next year. And I'm curious to see who's going to get him, if Shock are going to go for him and stuff like that. But there's a lot of interesting players in other roles as well coming into the league that I think is going to be uh, is going to be exciting to see. Look at the amount of pressure that Dallas, that Dallas put on proper here. So Shock tries to like switch sides with them after the Dallas fuel, but uh, proper just does not make it. Yeah, I, I gen I'm i curious to see. That's another in interesting question. Are the San Francisco Shock going to go fully Korean? Because they could add, you know, Max or Junbin, you know, any of those players, right? And go fully Korean pretty easily, right? Are they going to retain Sam and stuff like that? Like, I'm kind of curious to see what the Shock do next year. They honestly should. They have first dibs at all the O2 Blast players, so I, it'd be surprising if they didn't.
As much as I would hate to lose Kaluj, I think it would be worth to go Korean. Yeah, I agree. I think Kaluj could easily find a team in other places as well, right? Like, I think there's a, there's a lot of great Western rosters that would... Uh, we would find value in that. Look at this disengage from Dallas. I remember this. Also, this was just, in general, a bad Kitsune. Oh, well, I guess they're dead. Um, but Dallas... Shock had a couple of these where they were like, Kitsune rushing too bad, and then they did. I'm thinking of a different team fight. I think it's... Maybe it's on Dallas's attack? Maybe it's Dallas's attack, the one that I'm thinking of. Um, but yeah, there's a there's a really good Kitsune rush navigation uh, in this setup. Kaluj to Glads. Kaluj to Glads would be interesting. I'm curious to see if they stick with Reiner. Because I feel like with recency bias, everyone's kind of dogpiling on Reiner. But I don't think... like It's like we're forgetting the first half of the season. And, you know, he came out and said that, you know, he was having a lot of physical and mental issues uh, throughout the season. So, first of all, it would be interesting to see if Reiner wants to come back for another year. He kind of, like, got the, the full negative experience of the Overwatch League, which is just dealing with... Toxic fans, having a bad season, having a bad stage, having it all pinned on you when that kind of stuff happens. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Rhino retire, but you know, I hope he doesn't. Maxon, thank you for the 16 months. Rhino did say he's going to take a break. Yeah. And like, I, I think it's important now when players say they're going to take a break, like, how many times have we seen players who like retire? They take like three months off and they're like, I'm bored. Like it's so easy after like, just if you are a player who is thinking about retiring, just take these two months, literally just disconnect from Overwatch, just never play it. And then in two months, tell me how you feel. Do you want to come back? Do you want to like play again? Do you want to like grind again? Because it's easy at the very end of the season to be like, I don't want to do this anymore. But you give yourself a month break, a two month break, do something else for a bit and you'll realize that you'll miss it pretty quickly. And if you don't, then that's when you know it's time to retire, right? I feel like a lot of players knee jerk reaction decide they want to retire outside of this. Drops? Yo, Tasmo, give me them drops. Yo, Tasmo, that, uh, that video of you giving, uh, was it Sparkle a hug? Dude, it got, it got, it got, it, it sort of, it jerked a tear out of me real quick there. That was a, that was a, that was a nice video. You jealous? Oh, well, no. Just saying, you, you didn't hug me like that when I was on Dallas. It's crazy. Just because they won a championship means they get a hug. It's crazy. Bias. You want a hug? I do want a hug. Kitsune Rush, Kitsune Rush. Oh, Mikey went deep. Yeah, that was too deep by Mikey. He, he It cost him too much to get back. They're going to commit the beat anyway. Ooh. Yeah, that was uh, that was pretty bad old management for the San Francisco Shock. Should have won a championship. Yeah. East Nick, thank you for the gifted sub to Taz, Mom. I think Kalu should have played Grand Finals. I think the Shock played incredibly well against the Dallas Fuel. And it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't. Like, if they put Collusion and then they lost, people would have said maybe they should have kept Mike in. It's easy in hindsight to be like, maybe they would have won with Kaluj. Maybe it would have been a 4-0 if they put Kaluj in after the first map. We genuinely don't know. Both have played well. Both have had their moments in the playoffs. I think it was fine. I think you couldn't have asked for a closer matchup for the Shock vs. Fuel. No one expected this series to be as close. Like, Dallas were just, like, head and shoulders above uh, Shock in a lot of ways. Right? Like, Fuel probably should have won this map, right? I think they had a massive final blow lead in this, uh... This ends now. Like, I think they had a massive final blow difference, uh, in this series, but Shock just, like, won the fights that matter. I thought that the Shock were going to win. I didn't. I, w I was pretty sure that Dallas was going to win. But I the, I couldn't have asked for a better finals. Because that is literally what I wanted. I wanted to go to map 7 and I wanted Dallas to win. Because, like, I think 
you know, I, I think I said this on Plat Chat, but I genuinely think Dallas deserved to win. Not just the players or in the server. Like, I think they were the best at this meta. But, like, Dallas Fuel as a whole has invested so much into Overwatch Esports, into the league. They've ran... They ran a tournament. They ran a homestand tournament for the kickoff clash. They ran two homestands. They've been doing homestands since the beginning of time. They have so many fans. They have like invested so much. Like I genuinely am happy that Fuel got a chip because I genuinely think they deserve it. So, I'm happy for I'm happy for the Dallas Fuel organization, and I think these players deserve it as well. As I said, I, I have this, like, mentality that I'm a little worried that this Dallas squad, like, this might have been their last dance. You know? We'll see if they prove me wrong or right next year. Edison kills Striker off the rip. How did the Dallas Fuel not win this? It, might, it must be a proper moment. Katsune, Katsune. Oh, good ult by Striker. It gets Sparkle down, lives to tell the tale. Woo! Mikey should have died. Yeah, I can see that. Maybe good pocketing by Finn. Let's get some field up of, you know? Get some Kiriko up of. Oh, the B comes late. Sparkle doesn't get it. That's what this, like, map kind of felt like on the end. Like, a, a couple of things going wrong from time to time. That last fight on Esperanza, we should have had zero chance of winning. Hey, you know where there's a will, there's a way. Let's get this primal from Fearless. How do you think Prob would do as a primary hit scan? Probably pretty well. I don't think uh, there's anything Prob could play in the DPS category that I, you know, especially after seeing this Sojourn, like even his Widow is really good on, uh, we saw it on uh, Circle Royale, so I don't think you can go wrong. Probably can do whatever. Just get. I think he just needs to get a good player around him, right? Obviously, Striker was great in this meta, but I'm not sold that Striker is going to be able to hang in like all metas, right? Like Trace or Reaper are his best heroes, so he's been fortunate that he's been able to play those. Like, do you guys? No shade, but you guys remember watching him play Sombra, right? In Countdown Cup. I think it's in Shock's best interest that we we don't see that happening yet. I really like the aggression. Look at this Kitsune rush. That like that is textbook by San Francisco Shock. And this happened a lot. Go in, engage with the primal. As soon as the they Kitsune rush, disengage. Because the monkey's the only person who can live. Like that's a great disengage. Not a great uh Kiriko ult by Fielder as well though. So let's see what Finn does with his. Well, I don't like that one either. That's just gonna, yeah. This is the disengage I was thinking. Yeah, that was a uh, proper kind of saving Finn's ass a little bit there. That was not a good Kitsune rush. He needs to wait for them to drop before he rips that. Oh, proper good sparkle. Just some good picks by proper. And Dallas Fuel get held. 1-1. One, one. Ready for battle. How many times does huh? Huh? Dude, I remember as soon as it went to 1-1. One, one, it was just electrifying. In the stadium, everyone is just feeling like oh shit we got a series on our hands because like especially after that hold on second point by dallas we're like oh no <laughs> the shock might just fall over <laughs> but no 
It's happening. I feel like Shock put proper exactly which bot could have had the most impact. Absolutely. And like even Krusty said himself in the interview that we talked to him is like, there is an active effort in enabling proper or like put the, putting a lot of resources into proper to help him succeed. So as much as it's like, well, proper's popping off, what is the rest of the team doing? Generally what they're doing is helping proper have that level of impact. That was a great dive by the Shock. Uh, any clue when the unwashed masses get their grubby hands on replay viewer? I don't believe you're going to get it for any of this year's VODs. If I was holding out hopium for you guys, hopefully next year we, the replay viewer will be available to the public. As far as I was aware, the reason it wasn't publicly available is it just doesn't run very well and it's not really ready to ship. But hopefully by the time Overwatch League comes around next year, it will be ready to ship. I... We'll fight for you guys. I will I will bring it up at my next Overwatch League meeting where we're talking about things and stuff like that and see what the uh, progress is on it. I got you, chat. Oh, probably got Sparkle. Uh, well, <laughs> I say I would have hit that shot as well, but I probably wouldn't have. I probably would have missed, panicked, and then like yelled that Reaper was one or something like that. Oh, C9. This was such a bad C9 by Dallas. This was the moment I was like, Dallas are choking. Like genuinely... Dallas kill one, and then they just blow like all. Of, am I? Is this is the defense right where they just blow all of their ults holding the spawn? Yeah. Eddie pops the overclock, all right? And you're like, okay, well that seems a little unnecessary. I don't know why they did that. Uh, they're already pretty much going back to spawn anyway. And then Fearless pops primal, and then doesn't kill Violet. And you're like, well, okay, that's another ultimate that they probably didn't need to use. So then Shock beat Engage, and then Dallas are like, well, we'll just Kitsune Rush to counter it and beat, but they already lose Edison. And it's like, oh no. And then they use the, oh my God. And they, don't, they used five ultimates to touch the spawn and just lost to three ultimates or four ultimates. They went into quick play mode. It was, it was, they just kept doubling down. So, some not great things. Sparkle goes over to the, the Reaper. To be fair, Shock blew their ult economy. Yeah, but Shock used one less ultimate and they won the fight, right? That's, that's always going to be a bad recipe for disaster. Oh, this fight, this shot. Is, I, I haven't seen this. Where... This is just fucking stupid. I remember this happening live. Recharging. Disgusting. Chio's just trying to hang out behind the van. And this is what he gets. R disgusting. I didn't even know you could shoot under that. Oh, Edison getting a big shot on the striker there. <sighs> I hit that for real, for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. What? Well, I don't know about that one, Proper. <laughs> I 
Oh, I think Eddie hits a crazy shot here. Maybe not. I would have overclocked that, but that was very good presence of mind by Edison not to. This is the shot I think I was th I was thinking about. This is so stupid. This is what makes Sojin broken, right? For anyone who is like, why is Sojin broken? This is the exact reason. Just an AD strafing Sojin from across the map that he charged up over the course of like 15 seconds and just one shot someone from across the map. That is what is wrong with Sojin. And that's the thing that they need to fix. Guys, I'm worried I might be a fearless simp now. Hey, it comes for us all. You gotta really put a lot of respect on Edison's name of how he's been able to glow up this year, especially on the hit scan. Like, he played really well. Like, I knew Edison's been popping off, but I wasn't expecting this level of pop off. Like, it feels like all the hit scans just kept elevating throughout the playoffs, and I was actually a little worried about Edison. Uh, because of how, like, you know, shy and proper were elevating, and then Edison's like, well, fuck it, I'll do that too. Bro, remember when I called Phyllis MVP about three weeks into 2021 season and Cust actually agreed? Phyllis was winning MVP in 2021. He was fucking legendary on the Winston at the beginning of 2021. But he was... Fearless was very average. Not just personally him, but every time he was in the lineup for Dallas. But he popped off in these playoffs. Ooh. Actually, chat, I want to get your perspective on this. You're the GM of the Dallas Fuel, okay? You're Tasmo. Welcome. Um, w do you keep Edison as your primary hit scan for next year? Or do you sign a really good hit scan as a third DPS and drop Gurio? Also, I think they should drop Doha just to give him to someone else so that we can see him play, but that's a different question. I think you drop Gurio, drop Doha, and then you sign a really good hit scan. And you keep playing Edison, but if it's like a Widow meta, then you play like that other hit scan or something like that. No, keep Doha, meta keep changing. But no, this is me as a fan speaking, right? Just give Doha to someone else, you know? Just come on i want to see doha play the game i don't even rush said himself in an interview doha is a great bench player you know doha isn't a bench player doha is a great player i want to see doha play the fucking game and if they got sparkle who has so much of an overlap with doha the only reason doha ever comes in is for a rainy day where sombra becomes meta give him to someone else you know let someone else have Doha. Sounds like the same problem as Hisang and Proper. Well, if Proper can play the hit scan, then you just play Hisang Proper and Proper plays the hit scan. Good beat. Oh! I, I want to see the, uh, the wraparound. I think it was on Dallas's attack, right? Or is this the shock attack where the... Shot go up behind. Yo, th is this the play I'm thinking it's going to be? Dude, this play was sick. I think I credited this to Dallas, but this was actually a shock play um, when I talked about it. This play was sick. 
They almost got away with it. So they trade the thing, which is fine for Dallas, right? Chaining the Katsune Rush for the, the Primal is fine, but they lose the card, which is the big thing. Shock starts getting the card going, which forces Dallas Fuel's hand. So they have to overclock. And then they get pushed back, and then all of a sudden, we got problems. Oh, Chio's so lucky he didn't Ajax that. That was so close to an Ajax. I never even realized. If Chio Ajaxes that, Sparkle doesn't live to get the Death Blossom. Whoo, that was a close. That was a, that was a fight of inches. Pelican to Dallas? No, Dallas don't need Pelican. Pe like, Pelican also doesn't play Hitscan. They need a Hitscan player, in my opinion. Sparkle is great at everything that Pelican is great at. In a lot of ways. How low was Chia? It was like 25 health. Why would Dallas want Carpe? Carpe's going to Valorant, guys. It's over. It's already been foretold. Dude, people are getting so low. Oh, Mike, you're dead. All right, two points. I get so bored watching Valorant. Yeah, same. Um, I'm, I like fast-paced things too much. I like watching Valorant in small doses. Like, I like watching their championships and stuff like that and their finals and stuff, but I struggle to watch it, like, casually, like I would the Overwatch League. Yeah, you know, there's this Pine guy who thing. That's what Dallas should do. Dallas should sign Pine again. Problem solved, Chad. Never mind. All your suggestions, they can now be directed to the bin. Pine's going to Dallas. Oh, Phil's down. Lip ain't leaving dragons. They're going to build around him. I would be surprised if Shanghai let him go. I don't know if like me, I, I assume that he's not out of contract, but yeah, I, I, I would expect the Shanghai dragons to build around Lip. With, uh, it'll be interesting to see what that team looks like next year, but yeah. Arns to Dallas. I don't think anyone's going to take a risk on Arns again. I don't think anyone will take a risk on arms. You can't just keep retiring. I well, actually never mind. I say that, but here here we are watching Striker in the grand finals. So never say never. <laughs> Did he retire? Yeah, that's the second time he's retired. What about Xy? Xy sounds like he still wants to play. We never really found out why he didn't play more for the. Florida Mayhem. Obviously, Hydron played great, but... <laughs> Cuss the comeback incoming. I can promise you one thing. Out of all the players potentially unretiring, I am not one of them. Beat, beat. Lots of ults. Oh, wow. Good save on a proper. Oh, he, he, st he stopped healing him. I don't know why Finn decided to, stop, to not heal proper after throwing the E on him. What was that shot by Edison? Oh, I thought he was looking the other direction. Do you think Cuss is gonna watch what Proper is doing to people and decide he's gonna be the next on Proper's healers? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good over here. I'm vibing. Rather just talk about these, talk shit about these players from a distance. Oh, Finn's gonna be careful. He is not where he wants to be. He's not where he wants to. Oh my god. Well, Dallas have the card now. Oh, I remember this. That was a great boot by Chio, but that's a C9. That was quite poor by Shock. That was a really bad play. Like, they're obviously trying to give Edison space because he, he overclocked, but I don't know. 
That felt a little too free. I had to stop watching because Boston made me too sad. Finals are great though. <laughs> Boston does that to people. Oh, the beat was late. Violet's beats have been kind of sussy. He's had a couple of sussy beats. Why do you people hate punk so much? Who hates punk? Let me at him. I'll fight him. Oh, the Parse coach? Oh, right, right, yeah. Boston's management? Yeah, Laurie. Oh, Sparkle just got rolled. Avast? Avast hates punk? Yeah, well, Avast hates people and fun and nice things. And he's also a smurf head, so he obviously has no idea what he's talking about. Where are the smurf heads at now, you know? Is he gonna overclock? I feel like proper should overclock. Am I the only one who thinks proper should overclock? Or well, don't overclock now. Oh, he's dead. That was kind of very disjointed by the shock. Shock kind of have these moments where they're like, oh my god, the shock are playing great, and then they just do something, and I'm like, ooh. Ooh, that wasn't great. Eddie? Yeah, that's nothing you can do about that. I wish they would release the comms. They can't release the comms because players say a lot of shit. It's a lot of swearing and a lot of shit that players say. They're never going to release the comms. Uh, they obviously they do comms check because that's them combing through it to like give you the highlights, but they're never just going to release. Oh. They needed Violet. He was the beat. Yeah, Winston, 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 Winston. Players say all kind of shit. Yeah. Players flame other players all the time. There's a lot of toxicity. There's a lot of things that are said that should never be public. And players and teams, like, they shouldn't have to feel like they have to filter themselves when they're, when they're competing. They've done it in the past where they told teams that they were going to be, like, showing their comms from time to time. Um, but they go back and forth on that because players swear, right? Like, all the time. Oh, proper kills filled up before the beat goes down. That's so big. So happy for my Dallas family to get to win, but shock my goodness, what a dominant lower bracket run and pushing it to the max. You did both. Absolutely, Yamagatsu. Yeah, it was uh it was a crazy event. Swearing I would like you to know when I say players say bad things and bad words, I'm not talking about your traditional swears. I th it goes a lot deeper than that, chat. Oh, I don't really like this idea of using Death Blossom into, uh, I don't really like the idea of using Death Blossom into a, uh, a Suzu, but 
Honestly, I love the aggression by Shock. And this is sort of what I say. It's like Shock has some really good plays. Like that was a smart one. They drop, they punish, especially because they know they need to go to point. That was such a good time. Like this timing by proper was crazy. Um, but yeah. Oh, that was such an important shot. So this is another fight, map in which Dallas probably should have won with a good hold, but Sh Shock just like, their holds in certain situations were just fucking crazy. Like they had some crazy holds. Two to one for the San Francisco Shock. I think Shock lost the series when they lost the final fight of this map. I don't know if it's just this map. Like, obviously, this this map is one that they Shock probably should have won. But I think you could say the both the same thing about both teams. Both teams lost maps that they probably shouldn't have won, which is what made this playoffs great, right? Is that like every map felt like a it was on a knife's edge the entire uh, the entire map. Bug, it's Mikey. And off they go. We're on to the races. Thoughts on Mike being an overclusion? I talked about it earlier, but I think it was fine. Like, I, it seems like the right decision. I think the series was close. Do I think Kaluge would have changed the outcome? Probably not. Maybe, but it's impossible to say, right? Maybe Kaluge would be better. Maybe Kaluge would have been worse. I don't think you can say one way or the other. I think both had good moments throughout the playoffs. Dude, Felix is just so afraid every time he jumps. They're pushing the bar. Yeah, like this is fine for Dallas. Felix is prime where you can just go up, right? This is a great dive by da uh, by Shock. They literally just like dive and look at, look at how clean this dive is by uh by Shock. Chio just gets murdered. Like Chio's on the card. I, I think Chio shouldn't be on the card. Like Chio, you should just have your Reaper on the card in that situation because he can wraith if he gets drove. Lucio, it doesn't matter how fast you can wall ride or how far you can run. You're just gonna get murdered in that situation. I remember that Fearless drank four monster cans before this match. Yeah, Fearless. I've heard that, yeah, Fearless was like dumb nervous. Johnny was telling that story. Not a great primal by Fearless. Can't really accomplish anything. Oh, never mind. He oh, no. The beat was bad by Chio. Couldn't save Edison. about that beat by Pro by Violet as well like that seemed really unnecessary it's not the worst thing in the world but I don't know like let's go back to Violet Pop. like is this beat really necessary they have they they've killed the Sojin Eddie's dead the beat comes out from Chio like do you I guess he really wants to stop the card from going but like he's really only beating for Mikey who's already I guess if Spark was gonna throw a death blossom into the beat it's not the worst. In Mikey's defense, he was in a fearless. Well, no, in Mikey's defense, he's going into one of the most well-coordinated teams in a Reaper meta. 
that we've ever seen, which is in the Dallas Fuel. Like, it's just very hard to play Winston. No one else even got close to Dallas Fuel uh, in this matchup, so... Oh, Violet. Just like looking at that from his perspective, that was so greedy. That was, that was greedy. He's just jumping up and down. Oh, that's good headshot by uh, Finn. That was actually such an important headshot by Finn. Oh my God, Finn. KJ's, thank you for the 20 months. a little late from Violet. Striker got it though, which is the most important one. Nice. Give the Shock another year to play together. All right, I'm calling it now. Shock are my early favorites to win 2023. I think if they retain proper, they keep their back line and they add like a couple of extra pieces. I think, I think that's my, they're my favorites to win. It's so early to say that. Yeah, but when I get it right, I'm going to feel good. And then you guys are probably going to forget by the time we get there. So you'll remember if I get it right, but forget if I get it wrong. So checkmate. They get an elite tank. I'm assuming that they're, if they can get one of the O2 blast tanks, I think that would be like a big upgrade. And then I think if they can get uh, He Sang, like why not, right? Why can't they be the best team? Dude, what's Mikey doing? I don't really see anyone, but Mikey be going. Oh, I don't, that was a good play by Mikey. Forced the pri That was not a good death boss by Sparkle, but that was all pressure by Mikey. Oh, Field is going to commit. Wow, that was such a crazy commit by Fielder there to hold that. Oh god, never mind. Shock and Shield committing. And they're gonna beat as well. Oh, that was good play by that was great play by Fielder. Literally just negated the Death Blossom and the uh the sound barrier by great support usage. Fire gets caught. The field is so good. What do you think happened between the A's? They look so dominant when playing each other. I talked about this a lot on Plachat if you want to go have a look at that. Uh, but my TLDR is I think with only in the East, you only have six teams to scrim against, like Overwatch League teams to scrim against. And in the West, you have 12 teams to scrim against. So I think you get more effective Praskidus in the West than you will in the East. And you have more teams to work with and more teams to try and work out the meta. And I think that hurts them in, a, in the grand scheme of the long run. Obviously, there's going to be exceptions and that's not always going to be a hindrance to all these teams. But I think overall, it's a big problem for uh, the East. Yeah, our team scrim against contenders teams. There are very few contenders teams that can scrim at this level, especially after the San Francisco Shock essentially cannibalized uh, the best players in Korean contenders, for, which was like proper, Finn, all that kind of stuff. So... I don't know how many good Korean contenders teams that exist anymore that would be able to play at the level of Al and be meaningful, good meaningful practice. There's also been a very heavy disconnect this year between contenders and Al patches. 
uh, that hasn't been as prevalent in the past. And then remember, when we say the East has teams to scrim with, one of them's Chengdu and one of them's the Valiant, right? Who have been inconsistent hodgepodge mess of a team. All right, the shot at the hold with only the overclock. That's pretty big. Is there a future where the league isn't divided into two regions? No. I think it's more likely that the league divides more than uh, than it currently is. I think having a 13-7 split is, is a big problem. And like the regions, the way it works currently. Alright, you take overclock for the Katsune Rush. Going into fight or fight territory. Konzi, mate, thank you for the seven months. Back to the pre COVID plan? No. There's no way they're going to do traveling and homestands in that way. That was a bad plan. Another Violet beat, which I don't know. It's not bad, but it doesn't really, like, Dallas Stewart is kind of back up. It doesn't really give them an advantage. I guess Chio dies, so you can't argue with the results. Oh, Felix just catches. Death Boston doesn't get a lot. Oh, my God. Nice. Hot diggity damn. How the Dallas View won that is crazy. I felt like Shock were in control, like, most of that map. 2-2, two, two, baby. Cuss the reaction to the MVP leak was crazy. Yeah, did you guys hear about this? I heard it didn't go to live broadcast, right? I believe it didn't go to live broadcast, but in the stadium, did you guys hear that when they announced Hardy as, uh... Dennis a worker award, they accidentally pressed the wrong graphic in the stadium and it said MVP proper. It's only like five minutes before it was supposed to be announced, but it was very funny. And everyone's just like, ooh, surprise. Ready for battle. It was brilliant. It's not like it's too much of a shocker, but yeah, it was it it was a, it was a yikes. <sighs> Felix was mad he wanted Harmon to get it well the crazy thing is the voting was actually exceptionally close because did you guys see that I don't think anyone from the Chinese broadcast voted for proper to win which to me is ludicrous like, I can understand not voting for them, but almost the entire Chinese region to not vote for them. I think most of them voted for Kevster and Lip, if I'm correct. But yeah. So that was... How close was the voting? I think probably got like 17 votes and the next closest was... Or 18 votes, and then like Kevster and Harmin both got like 16 votes or something like that. Perhaps anti shock? It's hard to know, right? Why, like, why none of them voted? Like, obviously, they're always going to be biased. Like, my thing is, like, I get that they're going to be biased towards the Eastern region. That's the matches that they watch more often. Uh, it was just crazy to me that, like, no one voted for proper. <laughs> Maybe they thought Rookie of the Year shouldn't get MVP. Maybe. Maybe that's their, their opinion. Ah, thanks. 
Probably plays like such a Chad. Yeah, he does actually. By the way, Cuss, I really enjoyed your whole bit with the YouTube plaque. It was quality entertainment. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It was fun. Good beat. I like that beat. Someone, someone save proper. Someone, someone save, someone save, someone save proper. Like that, this is what Fearless does, right? Like this is, if you're like, why is Fearless so good? Why is he MVP? Look at this, jumps in with only a primal, big damn, forces the beat, then juggles proper in a way that he literally can't do anything. Gets through the beat, forces Finn to come back and heal him and use the Suzu. And then the re he lives to tell the tale and his team just wins without him. Like that's the Fearless factor right there, baby. When do you think they'll release the MVP skins? They will not be an MVP skin this year. After the whole Sinatra debacle, they announced that they will uh, they will not be giving individual players uh, skins. I believe that they still giving away final skins, like the San Francisco Shock will still get a skin choice, I think. But I don't think the MVP gets one. Like, oh, sorry, the Dallas will get a skin. San Francisco Shock already have a skin. Wait, Dallas, no, no, Dallas will get one. Uh, proper won't get one. Feel his best Winston of all time? I think you can, I think you can definitely make that argument. Oh my God, Chio almost Ajaxed again. Dude, Chio was living life on the edge. Uh, 34 HP, fucking hell. That was a great beat. Nope, oh, proper gets him that. Smurf clears fearless. I, you know, it's close. It's close. You know, you, you, I think you can, you can, you can make arguments for both. Recency bias, it's fearless. But you know, obviously feel, Smurf was great in twenty. Oh my God. Sparkle. And once again, fearless is just murdering proper. No. Smurf didn't go all in 40. If you hold that against Fearless, then you didn't watch the all in 40 season. Smurf has twice as many rings as Fearless. Also, factually incorrect. <laughs> Smurf has one as many. Stop encouraging this gun? Yeah, I'm just fucking him. Oh, Death Blossom, not great. Sparkle better. Nice. It was a good play by Dallas. Honestly, like Dallas, just like watching Dallas play the game and the push and pull is just incredible. As a smurf head, I'm not constrained by petty moral constructs like facts and logic. <laughs> That's a funny line. <laughs> this guy's an avast viewer. That, I've, 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 I've worked it out. 
I found I found the Avast viewer. Oh my dude, he's not even aiming at Edison. He was aiming at Sparkle. Smurf Winston always felt kind of meh, to be honest. You guys are gonna make me scream. I'm gonna lose it. Just not reading chat. Yeah, I'm just, we're good, we're good. Do a solo VOD review. Proper? That was just disrespectful. That was just... There is no respect given to Edison in that, in that play. When does Edison start diffing Proper? He's been having his moments. I think Proper's definitely having more impact, but I, I would say it's going a little bit toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Proper probably has the edge. But, oh, Chio, that was a clunky-ass rollout. Last two maps, Edison turned up. That Colosseo was fucking crazy. Like, Edison went crazy in that Colosseo. It was like Edison just refused to lose. And on Rusty and on Rusty Six, you're true. Oi! Good beat by Vile. This was not a close round. Who, is it? Who came up with Steady Eddie? No idea, I just heard about it. Oh, hey, boy, let's not step on the keyboard. Fearless winnable! Jaws keeps saying Steady Eddie. Yeah, I heard it from the players and stuff like that. People have been calling him Steady Eddie, so... We just stole it. No, it's time who XUC super Gushway Dante much greater than Smurf. Score one to one. And it's into the start of the season to now has been an insane improvement. Yeah, it's been it's been crazy what he's managed to turn around to. Don't fail me. Or else. Error for getting silver three the goat, yo, legendary. Striker and Spark got some huge death blossoms. Kind of the unsung heroes of this ser these series is like Reaper is kind of an underappreciated character in this meta, but both of them were very good. It's very easy to be a bad Reaper, surprisingly, and both of them were rock solid. Like very rarely the first ones picked. Uh, crazy value with death blossoms, just doing their job, right? This is the problem with playing Reaper. It just feels like you do nothing for a lot of the time. Until all hell breaks loose and then you do everything. Like you're just sort of like poking at everyone but you can't get close enough to like actually punish anybody. Oh wow. Oh wow.
Striker has played in a Reaper meta for finals twice, which I think is kind of interesting. Yeah. Striker is definitely a good Reaper. He's he's put a lot of work in a Reaper. His best heroes are easily Striker, uh, Striker, Reaper, Tracer. Juice Oranges, thank you very much for the 50 months. Thank you very much for money. Ooh, he thought about it. Oh, he's doing so much damage. Oh, that shot was actually nasty. Beat late again by Violet. It's okay. It's not a big deal, but it might be a big deal. That's a great strafe. Does Mike get primal? Yeah, Mikey 100% primals this. Oh! There's just no fucking way, dude. Like, that's such a big shot. A rocket dog thing for the four year resub. Dude, he is just that guy. Dude, this has been such a bad fight for Dallas. Oh, Eddie's won. That was such a bad fight for Dallas. Like, they lost all of that percentage the entire time. I think Dallas probably wins this fight because they're going to get ults. Eddie needs to go crazy to hold this. Good beat. Proper get Sparkle. Dude, Sparkle's just straight up not having a good time. This is like why the you need a Sojourn, right? Like you just delete a character. Every every hundred charge, you just delete someone. And proper just does it on cooldown. Look at look at how look at that snap. If if I was playing a ranked game, I would say he's cheating. Look at this snap. Check in PC! Fucking ridiculous. Shot go up. Three to two. Ready for battle. Probably is the first outplayer that I legitimately wondered if he was cheating. Just to quell any like suspicions of that it's ju just not a joke. It is incredibly difficult to cheat on a stage that they were doing like that. Uh, just so that people are aware it, it there is a lot of referees you do not play on your own pc you do not have control it is that it is just he's not cheating just let me put it that way Five. you got the word dot exe on there yeah no, I think he's cheating. I th I genuinely think it's more likely that Proper is an AI that has been created by scientists to destroy the Overwatch League than he's cheating on the stage. I think that I think that is much more likely that he is an AI. He even he even said it in the. Did you hear what he said in the like? He, maybe he's just fucking with us. And it's actually true. Did you hear what he said on the on the in his post game interview? He's like, oh, I just put a chip in my arm, and uh, and then I can play that hero. And I'm like, ha ha. Wait a second. <laughs> what happens if he's just telling us the truth to our faces and we just think it's a joke? This shit makes me want to play Sojin. If you want to win the game as a DPS player right now and ranked, play Sojin. And if you're like, I don't know how to aim on Sojin, then learn how to aim. You trust me, it is literally free SR. Do players get tested for Adderall? No. 
There is no esports that test for Adderall, unfortunately. I think it would be great if they could find a way to, but I think it is a, uh, it is an epidemic. And I've talked about that in previous VOD reviews, but no. It is very difficult to test for that because uh, it is very easy to get a prescription for it. And also some players very much need it. So it's, it's a very hard thing to tackle that no one's really worked out how to tackle. Who's that one player that said if you're not playing on arrow means you're throwing? Uh, Ark from the New York Excelsior in 2018. There's a really good article on it at that time. They talked to like multiple esports players and they all talked about how it's like kind of a, a big problem and that everyone does it and you kind of need to. It's kind of fucked up. All right, so this is where this this map sort of like fell away from the shock. When they used the Katsune Rush, they used the Overclock and the Beat and didn't get anything from it. Uh, so now the Dallas Fuel has all of their DPS ults. They have the Primal. So it's going to be hard for Shock to get in. Like, what does Mikey do with this Primal? Wasn't there an article about how Adderall and esports and how it doesn't really help that much? I haven't heard. I haven't read that article. I've never taken it, so I can't like speak to if it would help. But from what I've heard, it just really helps you focus, which is definitely a problem when you're playing on stage at times, so. Oh, wow, Finn should be dead. So Shock just like didn't use an ultimate and just like lost the overclock. So now we're going into final fight. Shock waiting for a proper pick, the proper pick that's never gonna come. Like, what does Mikey do with this primal? Like, he's gotta do something to get him into this fight. Because Field is gonna get another Katsune rush, right? Like, Dallas is happy to wait. There he goes. Tries to get the, trying to get the juggle on the Chio. Can't really get it. Oh, good. That was a great primal. Oh, the. That was a really good primal. Yeah, Mikey gets good value with that primal, which is an important one. No high pace game of moments, right? Okay, as I said, I, 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 as I, I can't really speak to it. I've never taken it. I also don't really have like, I've never been someone who has like issues concentrating, fortunately. So I can't really speak to it too much. I have no experience. I just know that uh, I, I know of a lot of people who have taken out all in esports. All right, Shock just kind of not really pulling the trigger on anything. It feels like Shocker just sort of waiting around, not really being proactive. Thoughts on Kaluj versus Mikey style difference? I don't know enough of either of their styles to really give like a really good example of like, I know Mikey is more aggressive and potentially gives more space to proper. Well, I feel like Kalush is more tempered. So it, it'd come down to like what you'd really want in that situation. I'm sure they just wanted to give as much space to Proper at this point, especially with how Proper was playing. So maybe why they kept Mike in. So I didn't get a Tasmo hug back on Fuel. Yeah, maybe if I did whatever it took. Like they're not really forcing a fight right here. Oh. Nah, still no hug? Oh my god. You guys see what I had to deal with? No wonder why we lost. Alright, there's a Katsune rush. Pretty good disengage from Dallas. Oh, they're not gonna let Sparkle run. Oh, field a diff! 
Dude, Phil is so talented and handsome. Custer. Yeah, maybe if I was on Adderall, I wouldn't have fat fingered my ult. Have you thought about that? It's crazy. On this very map, it's crazy how that works. I don't know really about that position. Oh no, there he goes. He's shot to the right. Oh, good Suzu on the sparkle. Dude, Fielder, Fielder, Kiriko is just a joy to watch. Score. Don't worry, Casta, even with the Butterfinger sponsor, you are still our favorite Butterfinger. Oh, thanks, guys. Who are the top three Kirikos? Uh, I think the top three Kirikos that I saw in the playoffs would be Fielder. I really like Landon Kiriko. And then... I kind of want to put Teru in there for memes because Teru was just a hyper aggressive player. I don't know if it was good and I definitely think it cost them from time to time, but I fuck it. I'll put him in there. Just he, his damage was off the charts. Like he was almost always double everyone else's, like every other Kiriko's damage. Is that meaningful and impactful damage? Could he be getting more value if he was just healing his team? Maybe. I, I genuinely don't know the answer to that, um, but it was cool to watch nonetheless. Who won the creative versus Eris trade? I think both won. I think there was issues for both players on their current team. So, and I think both teams ended up succeeding. Like, I think Eris was a good addition and I think uh, a good thing for the uh, the Soul Dynasty. Obviously not in these playoffs. And I think creative did great things for the Houston Outlaws, right? Like he was a big part of why they did well in the Countdown Cup, why they beat Dallas at their homestand. And I think he played, you know, solidly for them in the, uh, in the playoffs, so. Does Jonak come back next season? We don't. Re we never really got any context of what happened to Jonak, you know. Proper. Here's a better solo flex support than creative. Well. When being with Lactra, let's create a stick to a pixie strong on. Yeah, I can see that. Fucking Reapers, man. Beat, beat, primal, primal, Kitsune, Kitsune. It's go time. Proper doesn't have it yet. Mikey down. Mikey didn't get primal as a big. He's so good. He's just... So good. <laughs> Feel the best, Kiriko? Yeah, I don't think you can doubt that. Oh, Edison just gets Striker off the rip. Violet, too. Not a great fight for the shock. Fielder is underrated. Fielder goes through a cycle of people saying he's underrated and then people go through a cycle saying he's overrated. I think Fielder's been one of the best supports that we've had in the league already. Like, I voted for both Fielder and Chio for All Stars. Like, they were they were both cracked. Like, the support line of the Dallas Field being crazy. This pick from Madison. How does he get this pick, actually? Oh, it's so nasty. Strike and Isu are crazy with this Death Blossom. Oh, okay. Mikey needs to go crazy with his primal. Oh, okay. <laughs> die, die, die. 
There it is. I hit. All right, final map, Coliseo, baby. Who wants to watch some steady Eddie? Put the Dallas, uh, put the Dallas fuel on top. Put the sh uh, San Francisco shock to bed. We just gotta get uh, Eddie Pop for this one. Look at Dallas disengages. Yeah, yeah. Do shock choose Coliseo? Yeah. They 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 have to choose between Coliseo and New Queen Street, and they, I guess they chose Coliseo. Why do people not like Coliseo? Because fuck this bridge. This bridge in particular. You can contest the cart from standing on this high ground, and this high ground is just very hard and oppressive to get through. Plus, this first fight is just like a weird choke that just sort of fights get kind of stuck here. This just it it just feels really bad to team fight on this map, and it doesn't feel like the objective works in the way that it's supposed to. And it feels like if you can get this checkpoint by just like having the right team fight at the right time, then you get a massive advantage. So in general, I think it, it goes back to the 2CP logic of I don't think the better team always wins on this map or the team that is in control more always wins on this map. Wait, wrong person. That feels much better. Was Edison from Atlanta good? In, in this series? Or you mean Edison when he was on Atlanta? Atlanta Edison was very mid on Atlanta. For the most part. Is on the move. Which is kind of sad because everyone always been excited, but he's he's living up to the uh, living up to the promise this se uh, in this season. Kind of crazy. You got to give a lot of respect to Dallas for like willing to invest in him. Oh, let's try to get Teddy. Let's move this barricade. Do you see Dallas dropping Guria? Yeah. And I think they'll get a new hit scan. Should I have to disengage to get their Sojin back in? So their fight, like, and this is like a prime example of why this fight, like we spent two minutes here and nothing has happened. Shock like one or five, but it didn't really do anything. Oh, wow. Man, Dallas committing to this fight. Guru has a ring, put some respect on his name. Oh god. Feel to get proper. Oh, Sparkle does the same but better. Yeah, it's kind of surprising Shock weren't ever able to close out that fight. Don't ever get develop as a ring? Yeah. Go to Field to Pop on that one? I right, yeah, I trust. Oh! This is the definition of call an ambulance, but not for me. Oh my god, that was actually disgusting. Oh, the Suzu? Dude, my hero. Legitimately, Fielder is my hero. Know where you want to be. Oh. 
Big Katsune rush. All right, Shock have the Katsune rush advantage. Is this where Eddie, Eddie goes crazy? Oh my God. Shot to shot is such a nasty ability. If you use it well, like it just does so much. I think it's a disengage angle. Oh, Chiyo got got. What? Oh, good B. Oh, Violet just not where he wanted to be. Oh my God. Where did my go with that primal? Yeah, he kind of got countered by the beat, but I feel like you need to come in and be disruptive after that. Doesn't feel like he did that. He just sort of like ran away. I don't know how I feel about that overclock, but fuck it. I guess if he gets a pick, like it's a huge pick and they probably just get like the checkpoint. Yeah, Eddie is just on it right now, right? Like, this is just pure confidence. And now they get the checkpoint. You get the checkpoint, you're in a good spot. Oh, that was uh, ambitious to say the least. Oh wait, he found Violet with that? Alright, shot, get it back. Anyone with confidence is Loki one of the scariest hit scans. Yeah, he, he, he's uh, he's on par with like your propers and or uh, like your shies right now, like in this like this map. Bill up, Bill up. Thank you very much for the prime. He's gonna rip it. I think you rip it now, right? He used bubble. Probably scared of Eddie. No, no, no. Don't say that. Probably not scared of no nobody. <laughs> oh, he really wants to hit something. Otherwise, he's going to start losing his charge. Oh, there he goes. Eddie's tempting fate with that positioning. Mikey Primal's Edison in the back line. It's a big play. Big B. All right. Has to be on Eddie now. Oh my god. Oh my god. Jesus. I was starting to get nervous. That was, that was a, definitely a team fight they needed to win. If Edison didn't get value and Shock came back with a big ult, the Shock could have come back in this map. But then Edison, this is like really the beginning of Edison just sort of like, no, we're not going to lose. Like this is when it, in the stadium, everyone's like, oh, this isn't going to end like the way you want it to if you're a Shock fan. It can't be understated how valuable Sparkle's uh, Reaper was in this entire series. Like, they all played so well. Everyone on the field played so well. Hello. 
I've come to the conclusion of <sighs> Yeah, like that's not a great Kitsune rush if you're shocked as well I, I guess he's like we have to pull something but Dallas just disengage and then they come back with their own and It's just better, right? Like They're kind of shocks kind of getting desperate at this point And then they get staggered, and now they're getting more percentage, and now Eddie has overclock again. Just great play by Dallas. Finn just challenging Edison there. Like, that. I don't know about that wall climb. Oh! Oh, did Geo with the Ajax? Geo finally getting punished for his hubris. The dog out this map was wild, yeah. Finally got punished for that greed. Can you imagine if he Ajax and then Shock turned around and brought it all back? I really like this play by Dallas as well. Just go early. Like, just get as many... They recognize that they want to get as many ultimates out. Even if they lose this fight, just take a good fight. Right? They take the primal. You get primal and you get overclock. As long as Shock aren't able to get all of their ults up. And, like, there's, a, there's been a lot of situations in the league ever since push came out where people are like, well, we just need to take one good fight. If Dallas were like, oh, well, let's just play on our high ground and then we'll engage when we have the high ground, they would have given up more of this map. Then if they had lost that fight and like shock hadn't like something had gone wrong, all of a sudden they get the cap and the map starts going. Dallas recognizes, just take as many fights as possible and force as many fights to get your own ultimates up. When you're, especially when you're an ult at disadvantage, just take as many fights as you can to try and take an even fight. Because if they can get Violet beat out here, this is huge. Even if you lose that fight. So they, they trade beat Katsune Rush for beat uh, Death Blossom. It's not the worst thing for you. If you lose this fight, they're trading back and forth. All of a sudden you recognize that you have closer spawns as well. So you have closer spawns. So any form of trading is good for you. Uh, so they get a couple of kills. You know, it's 3v3 now. Edison goes down. Fields is probably going to go down. Oh, no, he's alive. Chio goes down. But all of a sudden, you have spawns. So it's like, oh, yeah, they have the car. But this is one of the things where I was talking about where this positioning comes into possession. They can just contest from the high ground. They can just contest permanently, 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 and the shot can't come. As they get their respawns back, all of a sudden, Violet trying to get, get aggressive, hold the cart, falls down. And now he's fucking coming from Narnia to try and get this fight back. And it's over. So great play by Dallas Fuel to close out that map. GG to the Dallas Fuel. They win the 2022 Overwatch League Championship. Absolutely deserved. They were an incredible team throughout a lot of this season. Uh, they won two, uh, no. They won one stage when the Summer Showdown. They came second at the Kickoff Clash and we don't talk about the Midseason Madness. They had a great run. I'm glad to see this roster have a lot of success. Glad to see Dallas Fuel have a lot of success. You do need to put some respect on the San Francisco Shocks name. They made a ridiculous lower bracket run. They beat the Shanghai Dragons, and then they beat the Los Angeles Gladiators, and then they beat uh, the Seoul Dynasty, and then they beat uh, Hongzhou Spark, then they beat the Outlaws, and then they almost beat the Dallas Fuels. So a crazy run by the San Francisco Shock. I'm excited to see both of these teams, what they'll pull out next year, but there's so many great teams that played throughout this season who popped off in the playoffs it's going to be a crazy offseason i'm looking forward to seeing where all the players go what the offseason madness is but for now we rest uh i will say as like a psa on my youtube i'm about to go to australia flying out tomorrow i'll be gone for about two weeks uh and then i'm also just going to take a break once i get back just to sort of like disconnect from overwatch a little bit take a little bit of a break i might be playing some other games on my stream like i want to play god of war I want to play, you know, some other games here and there. So we might be doing some other stuff. Probably around December is when I'll start getting back into the flow of doing Overwatch stuff, streaming Overwatch. I'll have more stream stuff uh, and all that kind of stuff. But 
from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching uh, my content throughout the year. It's been fun doing another Overwatch League season. We are back in some way or form. The game's alive. The Overwatch League is alive. And hopefully going into next season, everything will be better. So thank you very much once again for loving the content, loving the Overwatch League, being supportive as all hell. You guys are the greatest. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys next time.